Happy Wednesday, everybody. My reflection videos usually don't do as well, but uh, this is what's on my mind. This is a more vulnerable video for your liking, if you like those sorts of things. There's a certain tension that I feel when I look back on uh, my life history, especially when I look at it from a professional perspective, because professionally speaking, it feels very much like I've been spinning my wheels for a long time. For example, once upon a time I was said to be a priest, and that's nice, uh, with the Legionaries of Christ. Good days. And then I left. Then I came home, um, and after giving my life over to being a priest and then discerning out, um, I come out with an associate's degree, um, and then very much drag my feet, and I still just have an associate's degree, although I am working on a master's now. I was a little lost coming out of the Legionaries of Christ as I, uh, try to figure out what I wanted to do in my life. I very much wanted to do something in the world of ministry, but couldn't really find opportunities, and that was frustrating as all get out. But instead, I started working at a group called Schweitzer Engineering, and I did some manufacturing. I just worked on an assembly line, and uh, honestly, that was a really good time in my life. Uh, I very much liked my days at Schweitzer, and I could have made a career at Schweitzer. I could have climbed in management roles and all the rest, and worked on a bachelor's under them and all that. But I didn't. I just I felt a tug on my heart that eventually I couldn't ignore anymore. It stayed on my heart for three years, and so eventually I left. And I think that was a good choice. Although, professionally speaking, didn't really advance me anywhere. I left Schweitzer and started working for a pro-life group, which was a lot of fun. That felt very meaningful. Everything was finally falling into place until everything fell apart. We're not going to go into the details of that story, but three months after I started doing pro-life work, suddenly I found myself jobless and homeless, which was nice. After that, I did some couch surfing. I ended up down in Tulsa. I worked at Starbucks for a while. And then after that, I, I went up to Wisconsin and I did a missionary year up there. It still feels like I'm just wandering. Now I'm 27, almost 28, and I've moved back home with my parents. Now, of course, I'm incredibly grateful to my parents that they're adopting me again and helping me make ends meet. The plan is to take advantage of this opportunity to focus on studies and some entrepreneurial ideas and all the rest and do as much in that vein as I can. Now that's fantastic, by the way, because uh, it's a tremendous opportunity for me to not have to worry as much about making ends meet, and instead I can dedicate myself to focusing on grad school. That will be very nice. I will have a part-time job and, you know, I'll be helping out as a part of the family, but all in all, that's a golden opportunity for me. But also on a certain level, have you ever heard of the term boom boomerang child? You know, those people that they leave home and then at age 30 they just end up coming back home and living with their parents? It's a little embarrassing. Um, am I a boomerang child? I might be. I guess that doesn't matter that much. Whatever. Uh, I hope that that all kind of illustrates the idea that on a certain level it feels like my life hasn't been moving forward, it's just kind of been starting over again and again and again, and that's frustrating. And especially since all of these major life choices I've very much made honestly before God, it's frustrating. Like, God, what are you doing? I don't understand. And that's been bugging me. Dear God, why is my life a mess? Do I have answers for all these questions? No, I do not. And certainly complaining about life to God is um, a good way to be cynical sometimes. But one comforting thought I had um, I was praying about this in the beginning of May. Instead of looking at my life through the lens of where is my career going and why isn't it actually going anywhere, instead of looking at my life through that lens, what if I look at my life through the lens of my relationship with God? How close am I to God? And even though, I mean, if anybody knows me, you know that I'm not a saint, uh, it's also true that I've been growing closer to God largely in spite of myself. Back before 2004, my faith was just something that, you know, I did on Sundays. I went to church on Sundays because mom and dad told me to. And then I went to the seminary and suddenly I discovered that Christ can be an entire framework for my life. And I decided to be a priest. I was with them for seven years and there were so many different moments when Christ stepped even more into my heart. I remember in particular a time when I was struggling a lot with discouragement and a lot of negativity, and I learned that the only place you can really bring all that is prayer. And that further, uh, joy is a choice. Joy isn't a feeling, joy is a choice. And it's a choice that I can only make motivated by the love that God has for me and that I have for God. And going forward from there, I've definitely had my ups and downs in terms of <laughs> uh, being faithful to a prayer life and trying to, you know, make God a part of my life, because it's very, very easy for me to say, oh, you know what, um, 
I could pray or I could go play video games. But all along the way, Christ has been reminding me of his presence in subtle, different ways where every time I get comfortable, he uproots me and sends me somewhere else where I'm forced to recognize that God wants to be a part of my life. And I haven't ended up on the streets. I was homeless once upon a time, but I've never actually been on the streets. God has been taking care of me. God has been making sure that, you know, all my ends meet. But I think that the point of all of what I'm trying to say is not that, you know, God will always make ends meet because, you know, sometimes he doesn't. There are people that live on the streets. The point is that God wants to be close to me and to everybody. I mean, that's universal. In particular, in my own life, God wants to be close to me. That's his number one priority. He wants to be close to me. He wants me to know that he loves me, that he wants me to be able to grow in my love for him. And I guess, you know what? That is more important to God than making sure that my career is on track. He wants to be in a relationship with me. It's really as simple as all that. So Christ above all things and everything else comes after, and I renew my trust in Christ, doing whatever is directly in front of me, step by step. What can I do today? I can do what I can do. I can do what God has put on my plate. And maybe, just maybe, that's enough. All right, that's all I got, my dear friends. Please pray for me. Um, I've been trying to pray for you every day, <laughs> although I'm not 100% of that, but I do pray for you. I also believe in you, and God loves you. God bless and shall. You know, I might need to find a new place to record. I feel, feel self-conscious recording in a building where other people are. This is, this is my dilemma. We'll figure it out step by step. In the meantime, you get to see my more melancholic side. Ah. <sighs>